You're probably wondering what the hell a Rubik's Cube has to do with D&D dungeon design. Allow me to explain. After having played nothing but 5th edition D&D for about three years, I, I began to hear these rumors. Dark rumors. Like cold mist drifting through lost catacombs and earthen halls. An ancient method of playing Dungeons and Dragons, where death was a common occurrence and darkness something to fear. And monsters were meant to be avoided, not fought for sport. This method was referred to as the old school renaissance. Obviously, I looked into it, and wow, people are still playing these old versions of D&D. In fact, not only are there thousands of different D&D adjacent and non-D&D game systems, there's tons of communities and content for those systems. It's wild. One of these systems in particular caught my eye as it was specifically intended to bridge the gap between 5th edition D&D and the OSR. The game is called Five Torches Deep, and it was created by Sigil Stone Publishing. It's a pretty nifty system, and you can pick it up on on drive through RPG for about 10 bucks. There's a decent amount of treasure to be gained from this book, but I thought there was one specific section that was extra clever, and that's gonna be kind of the main focus of this video. And yes, it does involve a Rubik's Cube. I still can't solve this. Page 45 at the back of the book explains how the GM can generate random maps by using a Rubik's Cube, or 9D6 if you don't have one. Okay. Basically, the way this works is you take your unsolved Rubik's Cube and you roll it like a d6. The colors that show at the top determine the types of rooms your dungeon should have and where those rooms should be. So, if you have a white square, that means that it's an open path or like an entrance exit area. Blue means an alternative path. Green is some sort of key destination or treasure. Yellow is a passive threat or a hazard. Orange is a clear danger or an enemy that converges on your on you if you were to enter it. And then red is blocked, locked, or you just can't travel there by normal means. Additionally, each of the nine squares on the Rubik's Cube tells you which direction each of the rooms is located, similar to that of a compass. The example the book gives is actually quite interesting. The book describes a scenario where the GM is scrambling to prepare for their session for that evening, and they use this tool to randomly determine what the dungeon's layout would look like. They also started by listing a general concept and contents. I also do something similar to that when I'm creating a dungeon or some other adventuring site. It's really helpful to just kind of bullet point all those things out ahead of time. I try to start with at least three. I could go through and show you what Sigil Stone Publishing came up with, but you can just read that in their book. Instead, let's hit the table and create one or two dungeons with my homemade terrain right now. All right, so here is the first dungeon. I wrote down a couple ideas here. Um, our concepts are mercenaries, some old ruin, I just call the ruins of Siltor, and then these mercenaries are perhaps robbing caravans and travelers on the side of the road. So I wrote down my concept, I have my three bullet points, I can set that aside now. And the next piece was to come up with our contents. What is in this dungeon? I wrote down stolen goods, traps, and a secret entrance to the lower levels. So I have to put some of these things in here, which I haven't quite done yet. Before I do that, here's our cube. Now you can kind of just randomize this and just roll it, which is what I did the first couple times. Um, I found that some of them I just liked the idea better. So for this one, I actually chose this top facing side because we have an entrance, we have a lot of baddies, which made sense with, you know, my concept being that this is about mercenaries holed up in some ruins. So the oranges are gonna be danger uh, bad guys. The blue is our alternate routes. The reds are blocked off or locked passageways. And then our green is treasure or some sort of key point of interest. So if I set that down here, you can see how it correlates with the map itself. The top left corner up here, which is our northwestern side, is our front door and our main entrance. As we move across this corridor here, I added some sort of like secret wall, secret door, secret situation here, because there's treasure on this one, if the players manage to figure that out. And then this one is a shortcut per the alternate path, which is blue. And of course, at this far end, I have a blocked off section from a cave in because this is an ancient ruins. This alternate path also coincides with the main path, which doesn't really say anything about that here. I guess this is kind of an alternate path because it goes the back way. Remember, this is a tool, so you can kind of just like make it up as you go, and that's kind of the point of the tools, how you use it. 
So our bottom corner, this is where I just decided to be the like last area where the stolen goods are located. And perhaps maybe, you know, this ladder isn't an up ladder, but it's down ladder and it goes down to a lower level or maybe there's a hole in the ground over here. But since it's orange, there has to be a danger. So we'll put a couple of these skull dice over here. This is where our main baddies are. They've actually probably been going down below to pilfer the ruins down below there. So we'll put that many there. The second section is our orange here, so let's put a couple more baddies right there just because there's also danger at this junction corridor. You can see I'm pointing to de delineate where <laughs> this marker is in the, uh, the south, south central section is right here. Our bottom left or southwest is a red square. So I'm using these portcullis minis I have to sort of just be like, yep, this got blocked off. Nobody knows how to unblock it. They're kind of rusted shut because this is so old. And I don't know, maybe the uh, maybe the PCs will want to come back this way and see what continues on around the corridor. Who knows? And then our final section here is another danger zone, which I guess I could grab a couple more of these dice. And maybe this is the first section where danger is imminent. Our mercenaries are kind of holed up in here. Maybe I'll get my little table mini and be like, yep, they're all hanging out there. So as soon as they come in, if they sneak by, they might be able to go this way and completely deter or avoid this confrontation here, which would be really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's our first go at it. Perhaps they, uh, our adventures, you know, start over here. They, uh, you know, get to the door. Maybe they're sneaking and they sneak in, peek around the corner. Our, uh, our rogue can maybe see that there's bunch of enemies here and they're going to risk darting across here making their stealth check and then kind of continue on this way while our fighter kind of stays put in the meantime. Maybe they notice a treasure, maybe they notice a secret path, uh, passageway, who knows. It's really up to my players to figure out. And then our orc may be like, well, I'm going to run in here and fight all these guys and he draws all their attention, uh, which would be hilarious because then these guys can't go this way so they have to go this way, which would be unfortunate for our rogue over here so yeah that's uh that's our first dungeon now let's uh let's take a look at a uh, another one all right so here is our second dungeon i wrote up some new contents and a concept this concept i feel as though for some reason i, I just felt like writing bullet points so i wrote down sand betrayal and escape so i kind of imagine that maybe your character was like prowling this sandy ruined place somebody betrayed you uh once you found once you found the treasure essentially and now the entire place is sinking into the sand and you have to escape the contents of this dungeon are going to have a trap a timer and blocked pathways i could just roll this and I actually kind of did just choose one of these randomly and this one seems like the best fit but we also said we'd roll dice so i'll do an example of what that would look like with 96 you would essentially roll all nine and then kind of just sort them all out by a three by three by a three by three. Yeah, three by three like that. So take those out, boom. And now we can kind of compare using our key over here with the numbers. So we'll say five is akin to the green. On this chart, it says the five is orange. So if cheap fabric and orange, orange, the three is a green, six is red three is green, etc., etc. Um, that's how you would do it if you don't have a Rubik's Cube. Um, but we're gonna just use this one because it's a little bit easier to just kind of improvise a quick dungeon real quick. You ever feel like you need a bigger table? <laughs> I feel like I need a bigger table for this. All right, so we have our concept and our contents. We're just gonna put those right there at the top of the screen and start building this out. I think this looks pretty solid. All right, so if we go down our Rubik's Cube checklist here, green means key location or treasure. I think it'd be cool to have treasure over here, just because, why not? These bridges are kind of meant to be the blue where it's like an alternate path away. Um, and we do need to have a timer here. So perhaps 
our timer is the red, these are blocked or locked locations that are going to shut down after a certain amount of time goes by. Let's say for this situation, I'll just roll two dice, 2d6. So this one will be a three timer and this one will be a one timer. So if our, uh, if our players, you know, they wake up here and, you know, they're not sure where to go exactly. We'll say these are doored up and the entire ruins are collapsing on top of them. Maybe they're like, oh shoot, we can go this way or that way. We don't know. They're not going to know what dice timers are for yet. Um, but I'd say in one, you know, round of actions, maybe this whole section here just collapses and becomes blocked off. So if they started going that way, they have to then make a split second decision to turn back or continue on because who knows what's over here. Luckily, there is uh, treasure here. So maybe we'll put just boxes of supplies over on this side. Um, and then the blue is just another alternate path. Maybe this is a bit more rocky. I kind of just threw my old XPS foam here to differentiate between that and the EVA foam tiles. And then our orange section, this is the danger or enemy. So maybe actually before I rolled these timer dice, we actually have, you know, two guys that come back across this uh, bridge here to come and fight you and finish the job. They realize, oh crap, we didn't kill them. Our boss is going to be pissed. Let's go back and fight. So now we have a combat scenario where, you know, time's running out. Maybe round three into combat, we would roll the timer dice, and then that really puts the pressure on for ditching this fight and trying to get to our exit, which is a wrap this way. Um, we could say over here on the yellow side, there's a passive threat hazard terrain. Maybe they go this way, and you know this room is just quickly filling with sand. So if this timer hasn't gone down, they go here, it's quickly filling with sand. <laughs> I could see a situation where they come back and this timer reaches zero and then this room collapses and now they're stuck here and are probably gonna die in that corner. That seems like a dangerous trap where that yellow is really coming into play here. And yeah, there we go. That's our little sand timer uh, betrayal escape dungeon. Threw that together pretty quick, just use this. If we had, you know, flipped this up a few times, you know, we could have come up with all sorts of, that'd be a crazy one right there. There is no escape. There's no white. There's no entrance, no exit. <laughs> so you kind of got to use it with a grain of salt. Um, this, isn't a, this isn't a bad idea. I like it. I like it. Good job, Five Torches Deep. If you found this video helpful and you would like to support my work, consider following me on Patreon. Your generous contribution helps me to continue to make content like this for our community. And if you're a big fan of room design, I recommend you watch this video next. There's some pretty cool ideas in there. Just give it a go. Thanks for watching. This is Dice ASMR. That's a lot of D6s. <laughs>